Hello friends. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the electron microscopy which can provide very fine details of cell ultrastructure as well as the morphology, topography, composition and crystallography of the specimen being observed. We have already studied about the different types of light microscopes in our previous lectures. In all of them, the resolving power was restricted by the wavelength of visible light which permits a resolution of 0.2 micrometer. In the early 1930s, there was a scientific desire to see the fine details of the interior structures of cells such as nucleus, mitochondria, etc. This required 10,000 times plus magnification which was just not possible using light microscopes. Electron microscopes were developed by Max Noll and Ernst Ruska in Germany in 1931. These are instruments which use beam of energetic electrons to focus on a specimen and produce a highly magnified and detailed image of the specimen. As a result of the short wavelength of the electrons, the resolution obtained is very very high in nanometers around 1 to 2.5 nanometers. Do you remember? Shorter the wavelength, greater is the resolving power. Also, the magnification obtained is up to 1 lakh times. I will show you a few comparative photographs so that you get an idea about how magnified and clear images are formed using electron microscopy. This is E. coli under, under 1000x light microscopy and this is E. coli under electron microscope. Budding yeast under light microscopy and under electron microscope. So students, let us move on to learn more about the electron microscopes. The electron microscopes are of two types, transmission electron microscopes and scanning electron microscopes. In this lecture, we will only talk about transmission electron microscopy in detail. We will discuss the components of transmission electron microscope and their functions, the working principle, the ray diagram, the applications of transmission electron microscope, advantages of TEM and limitations of transmission electron microscope. We will discuss about scanning electron microscopy and specimen preparation for electron microscopy in the next lecture. Let us first have an overview of what exactly happens in a transmission electron microscope. A stream of electrons formed by the electron source is accelerated towards an ultra thin specimen. This stream is confined and focused using metal apertures and magnetic lenses into a thin concentrated monochromatic beam. This beam is focused onto the sample using a magnetic lens. Interactions occur inside the irradiated sample affecting the electron beam. These interactions and effects are detected and transformed into a magnified image which is projected onto an imaging device like a fluorescent screen or a sensor like a charged coupled device that is CCD. Let us now discuss the instrumentation or parts of a TEM. Let us first discuss the electron gun. Electron microscopes utilize an electron source like a heated tungsten filament or 
a cathode heated up by current. The electron source or gun is at the top and produces a stream of monochromatic electrons. A high accelerating voltage is supplied to the filament. The acceleration voltage is between 50 to 150 kilovolts. The higher it is, the shorter are the electron waves and the higher is the power of resolution. Electrons are boiled off the tip of the filament by thermionic emission. The Vanelt cylinder has a higher negative charge than the filament. It helps focus the electrons. Electrons are attracted to the positively charged anode plate. Let us now talk about the TEM column. The TEM column stands vertically as you can see here and is made up of the electron gun at the top, a column filled with a set of electromagnetic lenses like the condenser lenses, objective lenses and projector lenses, the specimen port and airlock and a set of apertures that can be moved in and out of the path of the electron beam. The entire contents of the TEM column are under vacuum as electrons have insufficient energy to pass through gas and water molecules. This vacuum is achieved by oil diffusion pumps backed up by rotary pumps. Let us now discuss about the electromagnetic lenses, a major component of the transmission electron microscope. A series of lead shrouded and water condensed lenses are present in the TEM column as we saw in the previous slide. These lenses are electromagnets capable of generating a precise circular magnetic field. The field acts like an optical lens to focus the electrons. The field produced by the lens must be radially symmetrical as the deviation from radial symmetry of the magnetic lens causes aberrations like spherical and chromatic aberrations similar to what we have studied for optical lenses. The lenses are made up of iron, cobalt or nickel alloys. The first type of lenses in the TEM column are condenser lenses. There are two condenser lenses which condense and focus the electrons onto the area of the specimen being examined. The two condenser lenses each function to produce an image that is the first lens which has strong magnification produces a smaller image of the specimen to the second condenser lens directing the image to the objectives. Objective lens surrounding the specimen insertion area primarily focuses and initially magnifies the image. It is mainly responsible for the magnification and resolution of the image. The next lens is the intermediate lens. This lens further magnifies the image. Yet another electromagnetic lens in the TEM column is the projector lens. The projector lens projects the focused image onto the fluorescent screen at the base of the column or to a CCD camera beneath it. It converts electrons into photons. If you have been observing this figure, 
you can see certain apertures. These are annular metallic plates with a small circular hole through which only axial electrons are permitted. This permission of axial or central electrons decreases the beam intensity and also removes electrons that are scattered to high angles due to aberrations. Having studied all the parts and their functions, let us now move on to the working principle of a transmission electron microscope. The electron source or gun is at the top and produces a stream of monochromatic electrons. This stream of electrons is focused to a small thin coherent beam by the use of electromagnetic condensers. The beam strikes the specimen and parts of it are transmitted, hence the name transmission electron microscopy. This transmitted portion is focused by the objective lens into an image. This image is 2000 times magnified. The image is then passed down the column through the intermediate and projector lenses being enlarged all the way. The image strikes the phosphor image screen and light is generated allowing the user to see the image. The image is 250,000 times magnified image. The TEM has been compared to a slide projector. So, let us compare the transmission electron microscope to that of a slide projector that is used in cinema houses. A TEM works much like a slide projector. A projector shines a beam of light through the slide and as the light passes through it, it is affected by the structures and the objects on the slide. These effects result in only certain parts of the light beam being transmitted through certain parts of the slide. This transmitted beam is then projected onto the viewing screen forming an enlarged image of the object. TEMs work the same way except that they shine a beam of electrons through the specimen. Transmitted beam is then projected onto a phosphor screen or it is documented on photographic material. Images formed by transmission electron microscopes are always black and white. The degree of darkness corresponds to the electron density of the sample. The denser the specimen, the more the electrons are scattered forming a darker image because fewer electrons reaches the screen for visualization while thinner, more transparent specimens appear brighter. Let us see a few representative photographs obtained by transmission electron microscopes. This is a pancreatic cell. Observe the mitochondria, vacuoles and do not miss the Golgi border. This is polio virus, one of the smallest viruses, about 30 nanometers in diameter. Students, this is Bacillus subtilis, the rod-shaped bacteria which we are very familiar with. Just see the endospore inside the bacterial cell. The next picture is that of bacteriophages, viruses which infect bacteria. The darker areas of the image represent those areas of the sample 
that fewer electrons were transmitted through because they are thicker or denser. The lighter areas of the image represent those areas of the sample that more electrons were transmitted through because they are thinner or less dense. Let us now discuss the applications of electron microscopy, particularly transmission electron microscopy. TEM is used in a wide variety of fields from biology, microbiology, nanotechnology, forensic sciences, etc. The main application of a transmission electron microscope is to provide high magnification images of the internal structure of a sample. Some of these applications include to visualize and study cell structures of bacteria, viruses and fungi, to view the shapes and sizes of microbial cell organelles, to study molecular processes like replication, transcription and translation, used in nanotechnology to study nanoparticles, used in cancer research to study tumor cell ultrastructure, used to obtain detailed 3D structures of subcellular macromolecules. Let us now talk about the advantages of transmission electron microscope. It has a very powerful magnification of about 2 million times that than that of a light microscope. It can be used for a variety of applications ranging from basic biology to nanotechnology to education and industrial uses. It can be used to acquire vast information on compounds and their structures. It produces very efficient, high quality images with high clarity. It can produce permanent images. It is easy to train and use the transmission electron microscope. It can yield information of surface features, shape, size and structures of the microbial cells. No instrument is without limitations. So let us check out on the limitations of transmission electron microscopes. TEMs are very expensive and very large to handle. The specimen preparation for TEM is very tedious. The use of chemical fixations and dehydrating agents can lead to artifacts in the images. The TEM is very laborious to maintain. It requires a constant maintenance including maintaining voltage, currents to electromagnetic coils and cooling water. It is extremely sensitive to vibrations and electromagnetic movements, hence must be housed in area that isolates them from possible exposure. It produces black and white images unless a fluorescent screen is used at the end of the visualization. It has to be kept in a high vacuum. The specimens must be ultra thin, electron transparent and able to tolerate vacuum. So students, in this lecture, as I said, we talked about transmission electron microscopy and in the next lecture, we will deal about the scanning electron microscopy and specimen preparation for electron microscopy.